tell you is Okay, that is the face, the face of the tooth. Right? And this portion. the gullet. I think that's how you spell it. It's the gullet. Okay. When you're sharpening the blade, you want to take some off here because here you're going to get cracks. And if you take them out, they can't continue splitting into the blade and have your blade break on you, right? So you got to take some off of the back side. Right? You gotta take some off of the back side and you gotta take some off of the face. Now, there's an angle to that rake. It's called the rake. The rake angle, okay, uh, for hardwood, seven to ten degrees, right, and for softwood. Twelve point five to fifteen degrees. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay. Break angle, 7 to 10 degrees, hardwood, and 12 to 15 for softwood. Okay, these are the recommendations on this particular sharpener. Now, what I was telling you a few minutes ago about um, sharpening, uh, now the grinding wheel should be Sharpened as such. Okay, now if I blow this up a bit, it should be like this. Okay. This surface here will be grinding uh, the rake. Okay. This surface here the back side of the rake okay now if I 
grind this down or, or um, surface this grinding wheel larger like this, I'm not going to be removing anything off of the off of the back side, off of the I won't be removing any material here. The closer or the shorter the distance from the end here, from here to here, the more material I'm removing here off of the back of the tooth, okay? Now, if I made it larger, I'd be making a tooth that is too high. Okay? Tooth height should be should be 3 sixteenths of an inch. So you've got to make sure that this is short enough to only leave 3 sixteenths of an inch. That is the optimal tooth height. And um, you should, now as you sharpen and you sharpen more and more, this side gets rounded off a bit, okay? You'll know when to regrind your wheel when you start seeing curvature here and the distance from here to here is no longer sufficient. It should be around 3 sixteenths of an inch and that's what should be 3 sixteenths of an inch, the tooth height from here to here. Now, if, if, if that starts to round off more, that flat surface gets shorter and shorter and shorter. At a moment in time, this is going to be like, like this. It's not going to be worth anything. You need a flat surface and then a small, tiny radius at the end. That will ensure that there's no... Um, sharp, sharp edges or corners. Because that's where something will break if it does. Because this blade is continually being twisted as it goes around. So that, that blade is it's like taking a piece of metal. After a while, bend, 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 it'll break. But it's going to break where you have a sharp corner or a sharp edge. So it's important to have a small, small radius and have at least 3 sixteenths of an inch face. Of, uh, the, the face of the ray should be at least 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna resurface that wheel right now, so you have an idea of what it should look like for that particular model of grinder. Um, now the newer machines have a grinding wheel that's made out of diamond, and it already has that shape cut out into it, right? So all you got to do is uh, uh, grind, move, grind, move, grind, move. The shape's already in, incorporated in that grinding wheel, and it's, it's, it's industrial diamond. Um, oh, uh, well, on my particular grinder, if the grinding wheel gets loaded up, well, if you look at it from sideways on a tooth, okay, I'll draw it a little bit bigger. Let's say this is a tooth, right? Then this starts to smudge you'll see this. The material that was removed sort of smudges over to one side. You know your wheel is loaded up. You got to resurface your wheel at that point because you want to see perfectly square edges and none of this. 
on your blade. Okay, that's what I was getting to you or trying to tell you in the first place. I don't know where this section is going to end up in the video. So maybe you haven't seen it, me sharpening it, I don't know. But you want to avoid these slivers. So you have to resurface your wheel. Make sure you have a nice clean wheel. And that's on grinding wheels, sharpeners, not uh, diamond wheel cutting tools. Or grinding tools. Uh, welcome back. Um, I'm going to be sharpening some blades today. They're for a wood mill. And um, this type of sharpener is... Um, well, the blades are one inch by maybe a sixteen thick. Those are rough dimensions that I'm giving you. And, um... Oh, they must be something like 120... 240 long, 240, 240 inches long, probably. Plus or minus, it's just... I'm going to be sharpening some blades today. And this is a cam-type sharpener. And what happens is, as it follows the cam... It lifts the grinding wheel up and down, okay? And uh, it's got a liquid pump to provide cooling while the sharpening is going on. And um, I'm just using antifreeze, regular antifreeze as a, a lubricant and grinding. There are probably more specifics grinding solutions to this, but that's what I'm using. And, um, well, I'm just going to get started. Um, what I like to do is lubricate the tracks so the blade slides properly. You know? And uh, there are adjustments, right? Um, if I tilt my grinding wheel, I'm affecting the rake of the blade. Okay? If my tooth was uh, had no rake on it, positive or negative, just zero, right? Like on, on, a, on a cutting tool for a lathe or something. But they recommend 7 degrees for hardwood and 12 to 15 for softwood. Okay, so basically what I do is I've made some blocks with 15, 12, 5, 10, and 7, right? And all I do is put it under here and adjust it. My, my motor shaft is parallel to... Um, this flat surface or horizontal surface where the blade rides. So the tilt of the motor determines the amount of rake on the blade. If I said that correctly. I've got this adjusted to 10 because it's not really hardwood but I'm cutting uh, spruce and it's uh, some of, sometimes it's frozen at this time of year. Okay. And what I like to do is, I mark the number of times that it's been used. Normally you'll go three sharpens and then you got to do a blade adjust. Okay? And right there, is the blade adjust, right? That arm compresses this this piece here and I check the deflection with the dial indicator that's how you adjust the um, is it side rake is it called like you gotta bend your your blades like this right you got one straight one left one right and the amount of it might be curve it's called curve the amount of curve 
is normally around 21 thousandths of an inch. Okay, and when you go below 15, it's time to rebend that kerf. Right? So, now I've got the blade. needs a sharpening. First thing you got to do is inspect the blade to see if you hit any nails or not. If you hit a nail, you'll, you'll never get this, this blade tracking properly on the mill, right? You're I'm just going to check this quickly off screen. I'm limited on space here. This one seems okay. It can be resharpened. Okay, what you do is I like to lift this up, and it's not a bad idea to get coolant flowing here. All right, lubricate this. Uh, this bar. I can adjust different levels on different thickness of blades here by changing this pin different places. The blade rides on these two pins. All right? Okay, so I've got some lubrication on there now. this up so if I tighten it here I'm lifting the wheel I like to sneak up on things right that way, you should only be taking off half a thou or minimal amount of material. You want to take some out of the gullet because if not, you're going to end up with cracks here and you snap your blade, right? And you just want to take a minute off of the rake side and just trim the tip, the back side of that rake. Minute amount of material, as little as possible. That way, your blade lasts longer. Now, if this blade had just come from cutting stuff, and there would be uh, sap and, and, and sawdust stick stuck to it, you'd want to take that off. Then you can use a, a brass brush or something like that and just uh, rub it off, okay? And um, then you go through this sharpening process, okay? Now, what I'm doing now is sneaking up on this measurement. So here, if I hold it here and I let my grinding wheel drop, I should be, the length of this rod determines how much I'm taking off of the rake, on the front face of the rake, okay? Now, I'm not touching anything. Except for the back side. Uh, so what I want to do is sh shrink the length of this rod. I'm going to turn counterclockwise. That's going to shrink it. Now I'm going to check. 
not touching the rake yet. So I'm gonna shrink it some more. No, not yet. A little bit of coolant. Now I put a magnet on the back side, six blades in. Okay, so I'm over here at the grinder and this is what I have for a, a, a grinding uh, a grinding tool almost looks like a razor that surface has industrial diamond on it and what you do is you brush it across the grinding wheel that way and on an angle to make your 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 the back side of your rake and it should be level with this arm here like that when you're doing that 